It's rare to find artists that can bridge cultural divides so seamlessly. This is exactly what makes my next guest unique. His name is Yasin Al Salman, better known under his stage name, The Narcissist. Narcissin is, is an Iraqi-born Canadian citizen who grew up in the United Arab Emirates. His global perspective and politically charged lyrics make him one of the most socially conscious artists today. So without further ado, here's The Narcissist performing Leap of Faith. Yeah. Leap of faith. <laughs> What's forever to a right now kind of fella? And if I never make it, what do I tell her? Umbrella, re refresh. I couldn't sell a CD if this is my leap of faith. I jumped down, but I fell up. How does an artist develop? If your heart is telling you to keep going, the art scene isn't better than the sharpest of metal. Used to spread yourself thin, but you shouldn't have like Nutella. Well, I feel weirder than Jeremy Scott. Fear of pop got me underground like Barry and Pop. If the star dies in the sky before I see one, why would I teach kids to reach and try to be one? Hell, I never plan to search a scope in the verse for the afterlife. I only know a heaven, no planet Earth. And if a prophet can't save us, how can a church synagogue a mosque i hope that it works see i never knew that i could until i jumped out and landed in the <laughs> no cloud would carry me they told me don't you but i knew we were star For North America with $60 in a dream. A wife, adolescent son, a daughter in her teens. As modern as it seems, he took a leap of faith. The strings attached must have left him caught up in the seams. Everything is everything, it isn't what it seems. And I know nothing. And moms and pops said, if me life really isn't gonna be fair, you won't know what you wanna be here, but start bluffing. And Jay told me life is but a beach chair. But there were East Coast winters, there wasn't even a beach there. I took a leap, I froze in mid air and thought in the fourth cycle with more faith than George Michael. The sky is a the limit, then why am I in it? And if I hit the ground running, won't I fly into something? Like the moment I started writing to speak the tapes. I call that my leap of faith. Yeah. Hey, until I jumped out and landed in the No cloud would carry me, they told me, don't you? But I knew we were stars. See, I never knew that I could until I jumped out and landed in the sky. No cloud would carry me, they told me, don't you? But I knew we were stars. Leap of faith. Yasin, you just performed a song called Leap of Faith. Uh, in it, you talk about how a prophet can't save us, so how can a church, synagogue, or mosque pray and hope it works? What's the message, message of the song and why'd you write it? Well, Leap of Faith was really a, the, the story of my life in a way. You know, many of us in life have moments where we have to decide, you know, A or B. So that song was more about my life and my parents' life and the decisions they took in order for me to be in the position that I'm in right now. But when I ask those questions, obviously, it's also related to uh, the, the, how religion becomes institutionalized and how that affects our understanding of our faith or our spirituality. So it was really a, a point in my life where I was questioning everything. So I put it down on paper, like saying, you know, what if these institutions that are teaching us how to believe don't really know how to believe, you know, so yeah. that's really what it was. Well said. You're an Iraqi Canadian immigrant. You have one foot in North America, one foot in the Middle East. Um, how do people react to your music when you perform in places like Jordan and, and elsewhere in that region? It's, it's, you know, there's very diverse audiences everywhere I go. So especially if you go in Arabia, you know, every country is very diverse now. There's a lot of expats. So the crowd is, is sort of multinational every, every city that I perform in. So you're always going to have people that don't agree with your politics or your opinion. But then most of the time, my shows are more lighthearted and about the energy and positive exchange of energy. So I've had great experience that got so far. Good. Uh, as an Iraqi, uh, I can't imagine what your perception is of the horrific violence and destabilization going on on the ground right now in Iraq. Uh, have you ever performed in Iraq? 
No, I, I haven't been to Iraq in over two decades. Um, you know, we've sort of moved our family slowly out of the country as, as the wars, wars progressed. Um, and I wouldn't want to go perform in Iraq the first time that I go back after all this time. Yeah. Iraq is a, uh, a country that d deserves justice more than it deserves a concert. So I would like to go there and listen instead of speak the first time that I go and, and take in the experience and, and relearn my roots as I know them. I'm very attached to the nation and the culture and my family always kept that alive. Um, so hopefully I get to go back and visit before I go perform there. Yasin, uh, you were talking about some aid work that you were doing in Syria with some friends or, or helping do. Talk about that. Well, I have an Arabic album coming out. When I did that Arabic album, we fundraised for a couple of uh, Iraqi kids that were from Basra, from my father's hometown, who had a congenital disease, and we raised money to get them to go and have surgery and get cured. So that was during the process of recording. And a lot of the artists are of Arab origin on the album. It's all in Arabic. It's called the Energy Project. So I want to continue that humanitarian work. And when we release the project, we're doing a, a video for a song called Batal. And within that, we're raising money for 100 uh, children who need uh, new limbs, who are amputees. And uh, it's using a, a 3D technology to sort of do uh, limbs that are easily produced within Syria or outside of Syria and Turkey and things like that. So we're, we're slowly putting the project together right now. I can't really give full details, but it's, uh, it's very important for us to use our art to be able to channel uh, that power that we develop making music into direct change as opposed to just fundraising and throwing money at something. I'd rather see that directly affect somebody that needs it. You, know? you said in the past that 9-11 politicized you and your family and I was wondering if there was a certain moment in a post 9-11 world or was it just the rampant Islamophobia that I guess the world was encountering at that time? I mean being Iraqi and growing up between the East and the West and going back and forth and I you know I've experienced three Gulf Wars through media so there was always a backlash and also growing up my father was a big movie buff so movies like True Lies or Indiana Jones, there was always that like evil Arab character that was there, but I took it for granted when I was young. I didn't really understand. But as I started studying media and experiencing it, I realized that it's always been there. It was before mm -hmm. September 11th. Mm -hmm. It was sort of a, a, uh, you know, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way through the media. But when September 11th happened, obviously our identity was questioned. Everybody that was of Arab or Muslim origin was like, is this person a X, you know? So, in the beginning, we took a very defensive stance with our music, and it was, we are not terrorists. But you know, now, I think in the last five years, whether it be visual artists or musicians or any form of creative, uh, we've decided to create our own narrative. And sort of, uh, instead of being defensive, we have a proactive, and, and this is who we are. This is, we don't say this is not who we are. This is who we are. Yeah, you know? yeah I like that. So I that. think that's more important than anything, is to shift that narrative ourselves. If we, you know, the media is in our hands now, so we got to take it, take it within our own grasp and do it ourselves. And you taught a, a university course. I thought this was really interesting on hip hop and the Muslim identity. How have you seen the Muslim identity and just identity politics change within hip hop since you got started in your career? I started in uh, early 2000, like before 2001. Uh, and I started seeing, MC, you know, YouTube wasn't around then, Twitter wasn't yeah. around there, Facebook wasn't around. So we were connecting by email and ch sending MP3s to each other. But as the internet, you started seeing people in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Tunis, in Libya, and in, in Morocco, like all these Arab artists were doing their thing simultaneously but weren't aware of each other. So when I went and did my thesis, I wanted to sort of encapsulate all that as, a, as an independent movement that, uh, that is happening on its own in a grassroots level. Um, and to see it where it is now, a lot of the times in the media, it's represented as like a revolutionary. Uh, they only speak about revolution in politics, but there's such a diverse uh, sound and voice coming out of Arabia right now within hip hop music or within music itself. So we're working on a couple of projects too to sort of bring all that together uh, as content online to represent that diverse background that exists in the Middle East. Right? And, and you also were involved in a film, uh, City of Life, a couple of years ago. Uh, it took, took place in Dubai. Um, are you going to be venturing more into other, uh, other film, other mediums of art, like you're saying right now, with the medium? Yeah. Uh, where, are you, where are you headed next? Uh, well, we did an art show called uh, Arab Winter. So that was a, 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 f a multimedia arts show in Montreal, where I live. Uh, I also recently wrote and uh, acted and ended up 
sort of co-directing a film called uh, Rise, which is a short film based on my next album. Uh, we have an online uh, channel that we're trying to build right now for Arab musicians to put up their content. Um, so there's a lot of different things I have my hands in apart from teaching. And, and I'm just trying to keep it moving, you know, like I'm, I'm very, I'm a Gemini, so I'm all over the place. <laughs> so we'll see what happens in the next year. My mind might change. Thank you so much, man. Thank really you. appreciate you coming on. I appreciate on. you. Thanks. Was a land called Sumeria, where my grandma was buried in. We writing a verse to a mic like hip hop, still searching for life. Hey, you left our waters dirty, cries of our daughters hurting. Your cloud would not subdue me, worn out the proudest jury. Verdicts and vows so purely, I just in shrouds of fury. You will not fall, my kingdom. I hear your chant single. And free my children, make sure your soldiers kill them. You will not fall, my kingdom. I hear your chant singer. Was a land called Sumeria, where my grandma was buried in. Earth dying, feeling moaning, all beings in fear and loathing, working for no promotion. Low land and rising oceans. I let the tide start foaming, sweatshop in my clothing. You will not fall, my kingdom. I hear your chant singer. And free my children, make sure your soldiers kill them. You will not fall my kingdom. I hear your chant singer. Was a land called Sumeria, where my grandma was buried in. We write the verse to a mic like hip hop, still searching for life. Yeah, pictures we paint chapel, scriptures we can't travel. Why Adam chewed the apple? I fist bleeding shackles, the poor vomit money. They sing in violence for me. A king so shy and cunning, a song so high and numbing. Stay true to you, pray humble. Keep moving while they stumble. And as you fall, my kingdom, I catch you as you crumble. And free my children, make sure your soldiers kill them. You will not fall, my kingdom. I hear your chant sing. Oh. Was a land called Sumeria, where my grandma was buried in. A wife, adolescent son, a daughter in her teens. As modern as it seems, he took a leap of faith. The strings attached must have left him caught up in the seams. Everything is everything, it isn't what it seems. And I know nothing. And moms and pops said, hit me life really isn't gonna be fair. You won't know what you wanna be here, but start bluffing. And Jay told me life is but a beach chair. But there were East Coast winters, there wasn't even a beach there. I took a leap, I froze in midair and thought conscious artists today. So without further ado, here's the narcissist performing Leap of Faith. Yeah. Leap of Faith. <laughs> What's forever to a right now kind of fella? And if I never make it, what do I tell her? Umbrella, re refresh. I couldn't sell a CD if this is my leap of faith. I jumped down, but I fell up. How does an artist develop? If your heart is telling you to keep going, the art scene isn't better than the sharpest of metal. Used to spread yourself thin, but you shouldn't have like Nutella. Well, I feel weirder than Jeremy Scott. Fear of pop got me underground like Barry and Pop. If the star dies in the sky, before I see one, why would I teach kids to reach and try to be one? Hell, I never plan to search a scope in the verse for the afterlife. I only know a heaven, no planet Earth. And if a prophet can't save us, how can a church, synagogue, a mosque? I hope that it works. See, I never knew that I could until I jumped out and landed in the carry me they told me don't you but i knew we were stars my father left for north america with 60 dollars in a dream it's rare to find artists that can bridge cultural divides so seamlessly this is exactly what makes my next guest unique. His name is Yasin Al-Salman, better known under his stage name, The Narcissist. 
Narseen is, is an Iraqi-born Canadian citizen who grew up in the United Arab Emirates. His global perspective and politically charged lyrics make him one of the most socially